This is part C now in our video where we started out with this circuit and then we drew it into its equivalent circuit here and then back in our original circuit we determined what the mesh currents are and then with the equivalent circuit we also determined what the node voltages were and then in the last video we were just in the uh, in part B we were just in the process of considering the results that we get for the current flow through these resistors by comparing the results from the voltage node analysis with the mesh current analysis and we had left off where we determine the voltage through this resistor and we determine it through this resistor using the voltage node technique and we compared the results that we had deter already determined using the mesh current technique and they agreed with each other. So we're going to continue with that now and, and get this problem taken care of. Um, the next resistor we're going to consider then is what is the current through this resistor right here. So using our voltage node technique. So here we have IR6 and this is the right resistor of, of value 6. And let's see. Here we have that will be equal to 16 volts divided by the value of the resistor. and that's going to be two and two-thirds amps and that goes down. Now when we determine it using the mesh current technique we determine it to be 2.67 amps two and two-thirds amps going down so they are in agreement with each other. Then we also have this resistor, we're using the mesh current technique, it's just simply equal to the mesh current I3, 5.33 amps. Now we're going to determine it using the voltage node technique. Here, that is at a voltage node of 10.67, so the current is going to be that divided by 2. So IR2 equals 10 0.67 divided by 2 and that's 5.33 amps and that goes downward and that is consistent with what we had determined using the mesh currents so here then everything so far is an agreement but we're not finished because When we drew the circuit, this, and converted this to a current source, these two resistors were combined together into a parallel resistor. So now, from our node technique, we were able to determine the currents in this resistor, this resistor, this resistor, this one, and this one, and they were all consistent with what we determined from the mesh currents. That's good, but now what about these two? So here, what we'd have to do is, we have the circuit drawn like this, go back into this form here. Now here we don't know what the mesh currents are, pretend those aren't there, but what we do know is that at this node right here, That is at 48 volts. And we know that, in fact, let's just redraw just this part of the circuit. So here we have the battery and then the resistors like this. And we've already determined that the current in this resistor is 8 amps going down 
But for us, more important, we know that's at 48 volts. And this is 9 ohms. This is 3 ohms. That's at 240 volts. Now, <clears throat> we also know, bring into better focus, so this is at 48 volts. We know that if we sum the voltages around like this, that the voltage drop here, here, and here has to equal 240. We know that. And we know that these are all in series, that the current, which we haven't determined yet using the node technique, but that current is the same everywhere through. So we know then that since this resistor is three times the value of this resistor, we know that the voltage drop across this resistor is three times the value it is across that resistor. So here we have 240 volts minus 48 volts. So we have 240 minus 48. That's 192 volts. So this is at a voltage drop of 48 volts. That means then these two together have to give us a voltage drop of 192 volts. So that when we go all the way around, we get the 240 value. OK. Now, we don't know what it is. But let's just say that then that the voltage drop across this resistor here, let's just say it's x amount of volts. Well, if that's x, then for here it has to be 3 times x. Because this resistor is 3 times that resistor. So what do we have? We have x plus 3x is 4x. 4x equals 100. 92 x equals 48 volts. So the voltage drop across this resistor is 48 volts. So the current that flows through it is going to be equal to 16 amps and that has to be the same current that flows through this resistor. There are also 16 amps going down here but remember there's 8 amps going in the opposite direction so that's why for this resistor it's 8 amps but for this one it's 16 amps and for this one it's 16 amps and that's entirely consistent with what we had determined using the mesh current technique. So again, we just wanted to take some time and compare and contrast the two techniques and being careful that when we draw our equivalent um, circuits, when we convert these into a parallel resistor, then when you want to go back to the original circuit and determine the current through these here, we had to stop and think about it a little bit more. Anyway, okay, that's it for this video. Come back and join us in the next video. What we're going to do is go into um, super nodes and how we handle um, circuits that have voltage and current sources and how we can solve those using the super node technique. So come back and join us for that video and let's see if we can solve some more problems.